everybody. Um, despite the rumors that we're going to reincarnate Beauty and the Beast uh, tonight, that's not going to happen, so don't worry, you're all safe. Um, but seriously, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is our second time here. Uh, last year was the first year so at Sony Studios, and we really thank Sony for the hospitality. This is a very special place for us, and I think you'll all agree, what a great setting. So thank you to Sony. The program this evening, uh, the number number interesting and uh, hopefully evocative and provocative parts, uh, we will be uh, having a little award component to it, honoring certain people and companies as well. That's going to be a component. We also have a, uh, a panel, a keynote panel this evening on who's in control, really talking about who is really deciding content today. Content being in a number of different ways. It's really used to talk about transmedia, it's now trans channel. It's regardless of, of whether it's gonna be a game, whether it's gonna be a, a, a music, whether it's gonna be a movie, it's all the same, it's entertainment. You're competing for share of mine and that's what this is gonna be talking about tonight. Robert Noshak is gonna be moderating that panel and that's gonna be uh, well worth it. And we have some amazing entertainment uh, to round out the evening. Two very, not one act, but two very, very special Irish acts and so uh, I just can't think of another great way to spend the evening with uh, rounding up those two uh, uh, people. So I'd like to uh, welcome George Bailey to the stage. George is a Senior Innovation Advisory Executive for Sony Corporation, and George has uh, some remarks to talk about. So thank you, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, on behalf of Sony, I'd like to welcome all of you to our uh, wonderful Sony Pictures studio lot tonight. Uh, I think you'll agree it's an amazing venue. And uh, you're just surrounded by innovation and leading edge technology from the way we capture images with our new digital cameras to the way we do post-production. You're really surrounded by real innovation in both film and TV technology. Uh, the other thing, though, I'd like you to be aware of is you're also surrounded by a whole lot of history. And it's not too far from here that Dorothy skipped down the yellow brick road. Uh, in fact, if you came through our lot on that side, you would have seen the 94-foot-high uh, rainbow being built. That's a bit of uh, performance sculpture that will be here for a while, uh, celebrating uh, optimism and happiness and all that Dorothy thought was uh, on the other side of the rainbow. Uh, not too far from here, Mutiny on the Bounty was uh, filmed in a studio over there. And uh, also, um, some of the greatest Irish actors and actresses also entertained us on this stage. And um, one of them, um, let me just make sure this works. Uh, Buzz, where do I point this thing? There we go. I'm not making that up, his name is Buzz. One more slide, Buzz. So uh, Liam Neeson, in fact, uh, used to have lunch right in the commissary, right behind you. And everyone knows he's a famous Irish act actor. And you all know about Peter O'Toole and many of the other ones. But last year, if you came to this event, I hope you remember that I proved conclusively and beyond a shadow of a doubt that, in fact, almost all of the success of Hollywood was due to the Irish and Irish Americans. Uh, in fact. Next slide there, Buzz. In fact, um, all of you know Gene Kelly was Irish, but did you also know, as I pointed out last year at this very venue, that Rita Hayward was also Irish? Did you know that Marlon Brando is Irish? And did you know that Burt Lancaster was also Irish? And I went on and on last year explaining this, but this year is different. This year, it would be very irresponsible of me to speak only of entertainment and film. I think. This is the year we have to get serious because we're about to make a major decision about who's going to run this country for the next four years. So I'm just going to take a second and point out that not only are the Irish and Irish Americans behind Hollywood, they're also behind the race for the White House. Can I have the next slide, Buzz? In fact, you all know. I think you all know. Here's the, here's the expert. He's not Buzz, but he's Buzz's friend. Um, you all know that Paul Ryan, his family came from Tipperary. I mean, just take, just take a look at him. 
Just look at him and his name, Paul Ryan. Have you ever seen anybody more Irish looking than Paul Ryan? I think we should check his birth certificate. I'm really feeling we should look into that. Uh, next slide, please. Now, Mitt Romney is not Irish. Probably you knew that. But he has some Irish street credentials. Here he is in London meeting with the Prime Minister of Ireland. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what they're talking about. I think it was a Romney's comment about having a special bond with Anglo-Saxons. I think that, that might have been it. I'm not sure. Uh, ne next slide, please. Uh, and, you know, there still is more linked to Ireland from the Romney camp. In fact, you probably all know that Mitt Romney's dog is Irish and has an Irish name, uh, Seamus, I think. And that is an unretouched photo of the Romney vacation. And I think uh, Warner's is about to make a release a, a new uh, National Lampoon, uh, you know, Clark Griswold uh, vacation movie uh, using that very incident. Has it been repaired? Oh, I see. It's the upside down label. I didn't, re didn't know that trick. Okay. So, uh, but let's talk about what happens. And it still doesn't. Ah, there we go. I pointed at my head and it seems to work. Um, but even if the current team stays in place, we still have Irish influence. In fact, you probably all know that uh, Joe Biden is actually Irish. His mother's name was Catherine Finnegan. And, uh, um, you know, if, if the Secret Service has a code name for him, and it's Celtic, so very, very Irish. And then, of course, the most famous Irish person of all, uh, Barack, Barack O. Apostery Obama. And in fact, through his mother's side, he has uh, deep links, uh, deep links to Ireland. And I finally understood after seeing this photo. I finally understood what Donald Trump was talking about all these years. Maybe he really wasn't born in Hawaii. Maybe he was born in Dublin. It could, it, it could be. It could, it could be. But anyway, uh, the, the conclusion I'd like you all to reach along with me is that no matter what happens in November, the Irish will still have a strong influence on Hollywood and a strong influence on uh, the White House in our country. So that's a good thing, right? And uh, uh, well, let me go back. I was digressing a little bit because I felt it was my responsibility as a citizen. But uh, let me go back to the themes of this conference, which are innovation, uh, technology, and entertainment. And really, those three themes are the themes that Sony has. That's what we've all been, we've been about for a long time. And I'll just give you one example, uh, televisions. You know, that photo on the top left there is uh, the old Sony Trinitron. And when I, I got this photo out, I remember as a kid, the Trinitron was like, it was like amazing. We all went over to our friend's house to watch the Trinitron if you want to watch something. Um, and you know, now it doesn't look that great, but back then it was really amazing. And, uh, and then we came out with high def and then 3D, and now we've got something called 4K. And I hope you know what 4K is. And yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what it is. I don't, I, I'm sure you all know, but it means incredible picture clarity. In fact, it's about 8 million pixels. 8 million pixels. And uh, pixels stands for picture elements. That's about as technical as I'm going to get with you tonight. But 8 million pixels, which is about four times as much as you get with even the best Sony high-definition TV. It absolutely transforms the viewing experience. I don't know how many of you have seen something shot in 4K and displayed in, in, in 4K, but it's really immersive. It reminds me of the first time I saw a high-def uh, television set. You know, you can re never go back. When, once you've seen high def, you can't go back to low def. And once you'll see a 4K, you're going to want to have one. And in fact, um, right now, Sony has for sale, and if, you, if, you, if you're nice to me, I'll let you pre-order one, an 84-inch uh, 4K TV. It's absolutely amazing. In fact, there's one right in the Sony uh, store here on the lot. Um, it's got 10 speakers, and uh, it's got incredible 3D, and to play a video game on this thing is, is it's, it's positively frightening. I mean, you, if you play Uncharted or one of these games where things are shooting at you, you will be scared. It's a really immersive, uh, excellent, real life thing. It's really magical how it transforms your viewing experience. But to make that happen, um, there's even more things you have to do. And one of the great things is 
Uh, Sony, because we have a studio as well as the technology around the studio, we get to do a lot of experimentation. There's a guy here in the audience, Chris Cookson, who's been a pioneer in film technology um, for a long time. And uh, he's been working with a lot of the great directors uh, on this lot and using the most advanced camera technology. That, that camera in the middle there is the uh, F65. Uh, we call it Cine Alta. And it's an incredible 4K device. And you'll probably go see that film, uh, Columbia film, After Earth with Will Smith. It's shot totally in 4K. And when you go see it, there's a 75% chance that you will see it in a theater that's using a Sony 4K digital projector, because Sony has about 75% market share of theaters showing 4K movies. So I just wanted to mention that when it comes to technology, entertainment, and innovation, um, 4K is going to be something you're going to be paying attention to in the coming years. OK, let's, let's go to my next story. Now, um, before I came here, I had a, a bunch of people sending me emails. And uh, they, they asked me, last year I wore these visors that no one had seen until I brought them, and Sony 3D visors. That turned out to be a really nice seller for us. Um, something else that's kind of cool and new and maybe not all of you have heard about yet is a Wonder Book. Have, has anybody seen the one? This is a Wonder Book right here. Has anybody seen this before? This is really cool. This is a good example of innovation, digital technology, and entertainment all coming together in something new, something we couldn't have done five years ago. And I'm going to see if I can make this play the, the video for you. I'm going to do, I didn't want to do a live demo. It takes a while to set it up. But just take a look at this for a second. Okay, Buzz, can you, cut, can you cut that music, Buzz? Thank you. So um, anyway, I, thought that, I hope you found that fun. Uh, and we, when we did this, we collaborated with this author called J.K. Rowling, which uh, if you haven't heard of, your kids have. So uh, check it out. It's really pretty cool. So um, that's it for me. I just want to thank you once again for showing up here at the studio lot. I hope you have a great evening. Uh, John Hartnett has done a wonderful job, as he always does, bringing people together. And I hope you all really enjoy yourself. Thank you very much.